Hello, this is a tutorial on a tool called Twidla. You can get to it at twidla.com. Twidla is a free, no setup, online, collaborative, interactive whiteboard. And again, it is free. You can see here where they talk about the ability to log in and start a free 30-day 30 trial, 30 trial version. Uh, that is, if you want to see what the pro version looks like, you can actually try the pro version for free. Now, I have read in some of the blogs and some of the chats that I'm in uh, related to uh, ed tech uh, information and Web 2.0 tools that there is a rumor that Twidla is going to start providing free pro accounts for those people with an instructor account, so a, a .edu type of account. As of yet, I haven't been able to confirm that, but that would actually be nice. The only major difference between what I'm going to show you here and what the pro version would give you is the pro version would allow you to save whatever it is that you do here. Essentially, this is going to be a live, interactive, collaborative whiteboard session. And in the free version, once you and your participants log off, it's gone. Nobody has access to it. So if you want to have uh, the ability to, to save and share your final results of your activity, about the best you can do is take a screenshot and move forward from that particular point. So it's more about engaging with students and collaborating with students and members of your audience kind of in real time. So it's nice, there is no setup and it is web-based so there's nothing to download and it's as simple as clicking on start a new meeting here. So I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna open up our Twidlo here. And you have some tools that you can use up top. We have some text boxes that we can include we can put um, some shapes here, we can do some drawing and we can erase and so forth. Right now I'm in the whiteboard mode, which has given me this blank canvas. I can also pull up a web page and we can actually do some collaboration and annotate right on the web page. I can pull up an image and then a Microsoft Office documents, so a PowerPoint, Excel, Word, I can pull those documents up in here and then annotate with them. I have all kinds of color options for drawing. I have all kinds of markup choices, various line widths and so forth. I have my cut, uh, copy, paste issue here. And so basically this is just a whiteboard that all of us will be able to work on the types of things that we want to work on. And uh, we don't even always have to be in the same place. This could be something that the instructor puts together and opens up and invites the students to join and then you just work on it live in class with everybody having their own device. So in order to do that, all you have to do is to uh, invite the members that you would like to have participate. And it's relatively easy. You're just gonna click on this invite tool here. And then that allows you to put in the email addresses separated by a comma of all those people that you wanna invite. Or if you were doing this in class and everybody was there in person to see, all they would have to do is enter this URL here uh, in the side. So I'm gonna actually, we'll put a participant in here and we'll send the invite. And then once I get that on my other machine, then we'll see how, uh, we'll see how that works. So that would be one way that uh, somebody can get entered uh, into this. And it looks like it's, uh, it's over here right now. I can go up and uh, change my name here to Bob teacher. So that's who I am. So that shows you the one individual. So at this particular point, um, the email has come to me as a participant. And so I have the ability then to enter myself as a student. And you'll see now that we have our two individuals here. So anything that I'm going to do on my screen is going to show here. And then uh, the Bob student character will also be able to do some interactivity onto this. So let's go to a web page here and let's go to Forbes.com. And what it's telling us here is that uh, we're going to have a cleared page. So if I did have some stuff drawn on the whiteboard, it would now disappear. So I just say OK. And so it's going to pull up our Forbes uh, website here. OK. And ju so just so we understand, we have the entire uh, website as far as we can scroll, but none of this stuff is live. You can't click on any of these links. 
But if there was a reason for a particular website to be popped up and maybe you wanted to walk through with your students, maybe it's a search exercise where you want to get them to search some things. And so we have the ability to, to choose a line size, you know, choose a color, and then we can come in and say, all right, let's have a conversation about this. Why do we think this is happening? Okay. So it gives you the ability to do some of those types of things. You also have choices for things like, uh, you know, uh, shapes. So I can uh, create a particular shape. Maybe if we were doing some storyboarding or planning out maybe a layout, let's say it's a marketing class and you want to put together some print advertising, maybe you guys can work together and collaborate on doing something and using these particular whiteboard tools. You can also create a text box somewhere. Oops. And then you can type in, you know, information that you want. So this is pretty much all me on my end as the teacher. So let's have uh, Bob on the other side, Bob's student. Let's have him do some things so he can actually, you know, make that mark there and do some circling and whatever it is that uh, he, he or she wants to do. They can do whatever they want from an annotated point of view. So you can draw on the web page. Again, if this could be a document, it could be a PowerPoint, it could be an Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can put an image in here, you know, that type of a thing. So uh, let's, uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's pull up an image. And again, this can be done on either side. So let's say we, you wanted to actually use it from a tutorial point of view. And we have our image here. It's going to wipe out my screen. It's just confirming that. So this is a time value of money table. And let's assume that the lesson was for me to teach or to have the students show me their ability to use the time value of money tables in this situation. So let's assume that um, we were going to, we, we identify, hey, this is a future value of annuity of a dollar. So it's future value of an annuity. So let's assume that we create a scenario which would cause them to actually have to figure out how to use this. And so we, we create the scenario and the student comes up and they, they kind of say, okay, well, um, what we're talking about here is uh, 10 periods of time, and it's 8%, and so they would just show the intersection here. And uh, maybe we'll grab a circle, and we'll... I didn't do that real well here, but yeah, most of the lines, but you get the idea. So it would be a way for you to have a live response from your students, and if you had a couple of students in here, each one of them, could be using a different color right now. Bob teacher is green and Bob student is red. Bob student can change, uh, you know, his color. So he's now changed it to blue. You can see that here's that Bob teacher green. Bob student has now been changed to blue. So if Bob does some more, uh, you know, annotations, you can see that that blue is actually now coming up live on the screen for the teacher. So that was a website. Again, we can pull the documents up. I showed you images. All that kind of stuff works the same. And there's also the ability to have uh, them join uh, the audio component here, but that, again, is only in the pro version. So that would have the ability for all of you to talk rather than um, in, a, so in a completely online environment. That would work well. If uh, Otherwise, to use the free version, you'd pretty much all have to be live sharing this in the class up on the instructor uh, screen and then everybody participating with uh, their devices uh, in class whether you have them do this in, in groups or individually either of that would work well so uh, you can have them review projects you can use this with some uh, discussion back and forth May, uh, mark up web pages again documents Microsoft documents images and so forth so a lot of neat things you can do with it. Again, it's free. It requires no setup, which is very unusual for a lot of these types of apps. And it just gives you the ability to have some free digital white space to do some work. Thanks.